Okay, students. So let's get started with the MCQs for electromagnetic induction. A coil of wire above a magnet is dropped as the coil falls over the magnet and EMF is induced across the coil. Okay. What does not affect the magnitude of the EMF induced across the coil? Okay. What factor does not affect the EMF? Changing the number of uh, turns, it affects the EMF. So it wouldn't be my answer. Changing the height, it also affects the EMF. Changing the direction of the magnet does not affect the induced EMF. C is your answer. A magnet oscillates vertically above a coil of wire. Okay. As the lower end of the magnet oscillates between P and R, a varying EMF is induced across the coil. Okay. When this EMF is 0 volts, where would the lower end of the magnet be? Okay. So if your EMF is basically 0, that means what? There is no change in cutting effect. When will there be no change in cutting effect? When your magnet is stationary. When your magnet is stationary, your change in cutting effect will be zero or no change in cutting effect. Can you see this motion of the magnet? Can you visualize P and R are extreme positions? P and R are extreme positions and at extreme positions your magnet is stationary. So at P and R your magnet is stationary because they are extreme positions. And if the magnet is stationary at P and R there will be no change in cutting effect at P and R. Your induced EMF will be zero. C is your answer. Let's further move ahead. Okay, let's see this. A trolley carrying a strong magnet rolled down a ramp at constant speed. Okay. It passes through a coil as shown. Okay. An electromotive force is induced in the coil. A graph of the EMF against time is plotted. The experiment is repeated with different coils and a steeper ramp. Okay. The trolley moves at a greater constant speed on a steeper ramp. Okay. The steeper the ramp, the greater the speed. Okay. Which graph is produced using least number of turns and a steepest ramp? If you are using least number of turns, what will happen? Your EMF decreases. And if your ramp is the steepest, what will happen? Your frequency increases or you can say time period decreases. That in layman terms means that your one wave will be formed in a lesser amount of time. Okay. So if your EMF decreases, B and D wouldn't be your option. And if you are looking for a wave that forms in a lesser amount of time, C can be your appropriate option. Let's further move ahead. Now let's see this. In an alternating current generator, a magnet rotates near a coil of wire. The electromotive force in the coil is displayed on the oscilloscope screen. Which trace is produced as the magnet slows down? As the magnet slows down, EMF will decrease and your frequency will also decrease. That means your time period for each wave will increase. So is there any option where your amplitude or EMF is decreasing? Not in A, not in B, not in C. Yeah, in D. Can you see the peaks are decreasing gradually? Yeah. And they are getting uh, wider, you can say, or there is a larger amount of time between each wave. D is your answer. Let me take that. Okay, let's see this. The diagram shows a coil connected to a very sensitive emitter. A magnet is next to the coil. Okay. Which action results in a zero reading on the emitter? Okay. Which action will give a zero reading on the emitter? Moving the coil and the magnet at the same speed in opposite directions. No. Moving the coil and the magnet at the same speed in the same direction. B is your answer. Let's further move ahead. The north pole of a magnet is moved into a, sol a solenoid and an EMF is induced. Okay. What causes an increase in EMF? Okay. Moving the magnet more quickly A is your answer. Uh, this is what we have already done. Let's see this. A teacher moves a magnet into and out of a coil of wire as shown. Okay. In order to de uh, demonstrate electromagnetic induction, which statement is correct? As the magnet is moved into the coil, the left hand end of the coil becomes south pole no if you move the magnet into the coil this coil will oppose the motion by pushing it backward so maybe a north pole is induced here no this is incorrect as the magnet is taken out okay if you take out the magnet like this 
the solenoid will create a opposing force of attraction south pole here no north pole wouldn't be the answer increasing the speed at which the coil enters magnet enters the coil increases the induced emf c is your correct answer let's further move ahead a magnet is placed near to a solenoid that is connected to a sensitive zero ammeter the magnet the magnet is pushed towards the solenoid it accelerates and then moves at a constant speed then decelerates and stop inside the solenoid okay when is the reading on the ammeter zero when the magnet is accelerating no when the magnet is at constant speed no when the magnet is decelerating no when the magnet is stationary when the magnet is stationary the reading on the ammeter is zero a coil of wire is rotated at a constant rate between the poles of a u shaped magnet okay the two ends of the coils are connected to different slip rings so basically this is an ac generator okay which graph shows how the voltage between the slip rings varies with time so always remember the voltage for an ac generator will be in both positive and negative direction a has only positive voltage it will get cancelled out b only has positive voltage it will also get cancelled out d also has positive voltage only it will get cancelled out c is the correct answer an ac generator will have voltages in both positive and negative directions and it will keep on fluctuating let's further move ahead let's see this which graph shows the voltage versus time for an ac generator not a because it is only positive not c because it is constant not b because it is only positive d is your correct answer it is fluctuating in both positive and negative direction which graph shows the voltage output of an ac generator when the coil makes one complete revolution not a not b not c d is your answer positive negative both when wire xy is moved downwards between the poles of a stationary magnet an emf is produced between x and y okay when the wire is moved downwards a force of downward is being applied and emf is generated okay which action produces an emf across x and y in the opposite direction moving the magnet and the wire upward at the same speed no the wire is kept stationary and the magnet is moved upwards no can you see option d the wire is moved upward and the magnet is kept stationary yes this could be a possible option if you apply a force towards the top side the emf will be in the opposite direction d is your answer let's further move ahead the diagram shows a horizontal rectangular wire coil wxyz between the poles of a magnet there is a current in the coil in the direction shown okay which statement is correct so you are given the magnetic field you are given the current you have to find out the direction of force which law will you apply fleming's left hand rule fleming's left hand rule according to fleming's left hand rule your magnetic field is from north to south your current is coming out the force on wx will be an upward force like this your thumb will point in the upward direction like this you can place your left hand and also visualize it is it is there any option like that a is your answer the force on wx is upward direction simple as that let's see this the coil of a simple motor lies between the poles of a permanent magnet okay the coil rotate about its axis when there is a current in it what decreases the frequency of rotation okay what will decrease the frequency of rotation increasing the number of turns no reversing the current no using a lower voltage supply c is your answer the diagram shows a wire xy lying between the poles of a magnet okay the ends of the wire are connected to a sensitive ammeter the wire is moved and a reading is registered okay so basically you are generating a current okay in which direction must the wire be moved in which direction you must apply a force on the wire see magnetic field is like this your force must be perpendicular to the wire either in this direction or in the downward direction is there any option like that a is your option always remember force is perpendicular to the magnetic field okay let's see this a current carrying wire lies between the poles of two magnets as shown okay what is the direction of the force on the wire your magnetic field is from north to south so your first finger points like this your current will go downward your force will come out of the page and which law have i applied here i have applied fleming's fleming's left hand rule always remember whenever you have to calculate force whenever you have to calculate force you will apply fleming's 
left hand rule and whenever you have to calculate the direction of current or identify the direction of current you will apply Fleming's right hand rule simple please remember this let's further move ahead okay the diagram shows a current carrying wire in a horizontal magnetic field which arrow shows the direction of the force experience we have to calculate the direction of force which law will we apply left hand rule Fleming's left hand rule so the direction of magnetic field is like this current is coming out like this your force will point in the upward direction like this B is your answer the diagram shows a simple DC motor which labeled part is a commutator which labeled part is a split ring commutator obviously D what is the effect of using a split ring commutator it ensures that the current is same in all parts of the series circuit no it generates an alternating electric current no it produces a force on a current carrying conductor no it reverses the direction of the current in the coil of a motor a split ring commutator is used in a DC motor it reverses the current in the coil how often does it reverses the current always remember the current reverses every half turn or you can say the current reverses two times each cycle let's move on to the next question which transformer produces an output emf that is larger than the input potential difference so basically you need a step up transformer if you are smart enough you will like obviously cancel out a and b a and c sorry why because they have a DC input, a transformer never works on a DC input. Now you want a step up transformer. Step up transformers will obviously have more number of turns on the secondary coil. This is your secondary coil. Your number of turns on the secondary coil must be greater B is your answer. Let's see this. The input voltage of a transformer, the input voltage to a transformer is 24 volts AC. This is your voltage primary. And the output voltage is this 6 volts. This is your secondary voltage. The input coils NP is 720. How many turns on the output coil? So what will we do? VP over NP is equals to VS over NS. What is VV? 24. What is NS? 720. What is VS? 6. What is NS? Uh, place it blank. This becomes 1. This becomes 4. NS is equals to 720 divided by 4. This becomes 1. This will be, let me calculate it. Let's not take the risk. 720 divided by 4. This comes out to be 180 turns. B is your answer. Which row shows how electric L energy produced by a power station is transmitted to distance town? Okay. So the current is alternating and the voltage is very, very high. Always remember, whenever we are transmitting electrical energy, the voltage is very high, current is low, and it is alternating. Please remember that. So, which option will we take? We will take option B. Let's further move ahead. A step-up transformer has a primary coil and a secondary coil wound on a soft iron core. The primary coil is connected to a 6-volt DC current supply very big error transformers never work on DC supply which statement about the transformer is correct there is no output voltage why because you have connected it with a DC supply electric power cables transmit electrical energy over large distances using high voltages alternating current okay what are the advantage of using a high voltage and of using an alternating current the advantage of using high voltages is that less energy is wasted in the cable so A and B gets cancelled out and what is the advantage of using an alternating current? Alternating current allows you to shift the magnitude of voltage. The voltage can be changed using a transformer. D is your answer. A transformer consists of two coils which are wound onto a metallic core. Okay. Which type of voltage is supplied to the transformer and which metal is used to make the core? Which type of voltage is supplied to the transformer? Alternating. And what is the core made of? Iron. A is your answer. Let's see this. A transformer is used to operate a 12 volt lamp from a 25 volts main supply. Okay. The mains current is 0.1 ampere. The current in the lamp is 2 ampere. What is the efficiency of the transformer? So basically, I can utilize these values to calculate the power input. 
What will be my power input? 250, that is the voltage, into the current, that is 0 0.1. My power input is 25 volts. Can I calculate the power output? 12 into 2, that is 24 volts. How will I calculate the efficiency? Power output divided by power input. 24 divided by 25, this comes out to be 0 0.96. C is your answer. Can you see option D? It is such an absurd option. Why? Efficiencies can never be greater than 1. An AC voltage is displayed on an oscilloscope screen. The Y gain is set at 2 volts per centimeter. Okay. What is the maximum value of the voltage? Okay. What is the maximum value of the voltage? Can you see this is the mean position? What is the amplitude? 1 box, 2 box. If 1 box on the Y axis represents 2 volts, 2 boxes will represent 4 volts. B is your answer. Let's move on to this one. The sound, rate, a sound wave produced by a note is displayed on the screen by a cathode ray oscilloscope. The time base supply is 5 milliseconds for one division. Okay, so the time base supply is 5 milliseconds. What is the frequency of the node? Okay, very easy. Can you see 1, 2, 3 and 4? Four. 4 boxes are utilized to complete one wave. 1 box is equal to 5 milliseconds. 4 boxes will be equal to how much? 20 milliseconds. Can you calculate the frequency? Frequency is 1 over your time period. 1 over 20 into 10 is the power of minus 3. Your frequency comes out to be 50 hertz. B is your answer. So this marks the end of past papers for electromagnetic induction. If you have any questions, you may ask.